Welcome folks to another Fallout 76 video and in today's video we're going to be checking out one of the most powerful weapons added with the Nuka World on Tour update. That's right we're going to be checking out the Bloodied Thirst Sapper. But before we head on over and check out the weapon and if you're new to the channel consider clicking that subscribe button as roughly 90% of you watching are currently unsubscribed and it would mean a lot if you could press that button and if you like today's video make sure to give it a like so that more people in the Fallout community can see this. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Before we do some testing and showcase the build that best suits this weapon, we need to firstly talk about what kind of weapon it is, where to find it and how to obtain one yourself. So to start things off, and I know there's been a ton of confusion out there on whether or not the Thirst Sapper is a pistol or whether it's a launcher. To clear things up and from an extensive amount of testing, the weapon itself is not a pistol. So the likes of the Gunslinger perk cards will not work with this weapon to boost its damage. And also you can forget about the Tank Killer perk card for the very same reason because as I've mentioned, it's not a pistol or a rifle. The weapon itself is more like a mini Fat Man launcher, so in terms of perk cards you need to be looking more at perks aimed at launchers. Now don't worry, we'll get into the perk card setup so you know exactly what to use with this weapon very shortly, but let's quickly talk about where to find it. So as you're probably all aware at this stage, we had a lovely little update on December 6th which brought a brand new location called Nuka World on Tour, located in the Ash Heap. Once you head over to Nuka World on Tour, just simply head over to the Nuka Cade, and once you've gathered 6,000 Nuka Cade points, you can purchase the weapon for yourself. But that's not all. In order to weaponize the Thirst Sapper so it can deal this insane amount of damage, you need to also purchase the weaponized Thirst Sapper plan for 20,000 points. Now in order to gather up these points, and don't worry, it won't take you that long, you need to complete events within Nuka World which can grant you a ton of points. And also you can complete games at the Nuka Cade to also earn some extra points and once you have enough you can head on over and purchase the plans for yourself. Now a quick little tip in case you want to try and roll several legendary Thirst Sappers, I'd recommend if you have enough points to purchase a second Thirst Sapper and then if you head on over to a weapons workbench and scrap it you'll be able to earn the plan for the Thirst Sapper so you can craft more for yourself. Now that we've talked about what kind of weapon the Thirst Sapper is and where to find it, let's take a look at the mods for the gun and run through some of the stats that will help best utilize this build. So starting off with the mods and the only mod that you want to aim for to get the most amount of damage is the Nuka Cola Quantum Gun mod. And as you can see the difference between the likes of the Nuka Cherry and also the Nuka Cola mods, the damage drops off quite a bit. So to get the most amount of damage out of this weapon and as I mentioned earlier, the Nuka Cola Quantum Gun mod is what you'll mainly want to aim for. And also to craft the necessary ammo for this weapon, you'll need to head to a chemistry station and scroll down to the tab Thirst Sapper Ammo. And as you can see, it'll require two acid, three crystal, four gold, four nuclear material, and one Nuka Cola Quantum. And as you can see, the rolls that we have for this is the bloodied effect with Vats Criticals dealing plus 50% damage and breaks 50% slower. And to quickly note and to clear up any confusion on this, no, you cannot roll a two-shot variant of this weapon as the two-shot legendary effect is not available with the Thirst Sapper. Now let's take a look at the special stats and perk cards for this build. With your special stats, these will mainly be the special points you want to allocate as we'll mainly be going for a low health bloody build, so if you want to pause the video here, you can go ahead and do so. And for the perk cards that I mentioned earlier, we'll mainly be utilizing a low health build setup. And if you'd like to pause the video here to get an overview of the build, you could go ahead and do so. But the main cards you'll want to focus on is max rank of Ordnance Express, so that explosives weigh 90% less, as the ammo for this weapon falls under this category. Max rank of Concentrated Fire and max rank of Grenadier, so that your explosives detonate with twice the radius. Max rank of chem resistance so that you gain complete immunity to chems as we'll be taking overdrive with this build. Max rank of tenderizer so that your target receives 10% more damage after you attack. Max rank of demolition expert and this is a must for this build because if you want to get the most amount of damage out of the thirst sapper, max rank of demolition expert will increase your explosives by 60%. Max rank of covert operative for the first few seconds of sneak attack damage. Rank 2 of gun foos so that you gain plus 10% and then plus 20% damage to your next two targets as you swap targets on kills and vats. Max rank of bloody mess for an additional 15% bonus damage. Max rank of better criticals so that your vats criticals now do plus 100% damage. And 4 leaf clovers so that each hit in vats has a chance to fill your critical meter. And lastly, for anyone who might have been wondering, unfortunately the cola nut perk card will not have any extra effect or influence on the weapon, such as increasing the damage as this perk only applies to when you consume nuka cola. And for the legendary perk cards which are going to help boost your stats, we have max rank of legendary luck, max rank of far flung fireworks, max rank of legendary strength, intelligence and agility and max rank of follow through for a 40% increase to sneak attacks for 10 seconds. The armor we're also going to be utilizing with this build is a full set of unyielding armor and for a full list of legendary effects on each piece, I'll leave that in a pinned comment below in this video. 
And lastly, for our Cayman A buffs, we'll be using Overdrive to give us an additional 30% increase to critical damage for 3 minutes, Blackberry Honey Crisp to help with our AP regen, Blight Soup to give us an additional 100% damage to our critical damage, and also Tato Juice to help boost our AP. Now that we've covered your special stats, perk cards, and also the mods for the gun, let's go and test this weapon out in some of the enemies that Appalachia has to offer. And here we go for our first test subject today, which is going to be Swan the Behemoth. We're firstly going to take our Overdrive, so let's pop an Overdrive there. So we got an extra 30% to our criticals. And we are going to aim for the head. Boom! <laughs> and there you go, one shot and he is gone. Swan, thank you so much. Welcome to uh, the world of the Thirst Sapper. Thank you so much for your assistance. All right, let's move on to our next test subject, which is going to be the Myler Queen. So let's hop on over to the Cranberry Bog. Let's do it. Let's go. And here we go, folks. We are down at Quarry 3 in the Cranberry Bog. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and get rid of that Myler there. There we go. We've got that Myler killed. Now we just need to uh, wait for the Queen to spawn. Hopefully she'll uh, hopefully she'll wake up. Oh, there we go. She's, she's awake. Now let's quickly take a, an overdrive. Oh, can I get to my overdrive real quick? There we go. All right, let's try and get a, a crit on her head. Oh, boom. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Now, let's try and get another one. Oh, there we go. And just one more. Just one more and she is gone. She is out of here. And there you have it. <laughs> awesome. That is awesome. Thank you so much, Queen. Greatly, greatly appreciated. All right, let's move on to our next test subject, which is going to be some Scorch Beast. So let's hop on over to Dropside V9. Let's do it. Let's hop on over. And here we go, folks. We are down at Dropside V9 in the Cranberry Bog. We're going to try and get this Scorch Beast attention. Going to try and get a, a crit on its head. Is it going to work? Oh, it did. Oh, oh, my God. It's almost killed. Let's try another one. Yeah, there we go. Two shots. Well, pretty much if I was doing some extra damage there, or if I had adrenaline proc, uh, yeah, we would have got that in one shot. But that is awesome. That is awesome. Right, let's move on to our final test subject, which is going to be some super mutants. You know exactly where we're going to go to. We're going to head on over to West Tech. So let's do it. Let's hop on over. And lastly, here we go, folks. We are down at West Tech to take on this super mutant army that makes up the West Tech Research Center. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and get a couple of these uh, super mutants together here. I'm going to try and maybe... Uh, yeah, I'll go for him. Go for this guy. So here we go. Oh, ho, 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 there we go. One shot. Let's try and get this guy. Is that going to work? Oh, there we go. Another one shot. <laughs> try and get this guy in the back. Oh, there oh, it's going to work. Oh, it missed. It missed him in vats. Well, never mind. We'll just uh, we'll hit the wall beside him. <laughs> so there you go. Grenadier kicking in. Oh, we've got a floater as well. Oh, not floating anymore. <laughs> And also as well, is there anybody else? Oh, there, oh, is that guy alive? Oh, no, he's dead. Never mind. Uh, and then we have these guys at the back. There we go. Is that going to work? Oh, we've got a doggo. Don't, 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 uh, don't come too close, doggo. We'll uh, fire that there. Oh, we missed. Oh, hang on a second. That doggo might be a little bit of uh, trouble for us, but we'll try and get these guys anyway. Oh, we missed them. Oh, no, we didn't. <laughs> there you go. And also as well, that doggo is way too close. So let's try and uh, back up a little bit here. Let's try and get out of the way of this doggo because, uh, yeah, you don't want to be standing too close when you fire this thing because you will pretty much kill yourself. So let's try and see, can we uh, back up here a little bit? Where did he go? Did he follow me around somewhere? No. Where did he go to? He has to be here somewhere. Or is he chasing me around? Oh, he is. Oh, we're going to fire there. <laughs> and there you go. We got him. And I think the last one that we need to kill is the turret. Oh, boom. <laughs> so there you go, folks. That is the Thirst Sapper. And pretty much, I think we've uh, we've pretty much proven our point. This thing is absolutely insanely OP when it comes to uh, taking on enemies. Now, I am currently testing it out against the likes of the Scorch Beast Queen and Earl and all that kind of stuff. I would highly recommend, obviously, as you've seen from the rolls earlier, I would maybe recommend trying to get maybe something with a 15% faster reload just so you can get those reloads in quicker. Because as you can see, the reload time does take a little bit of time to... Uh, pop another Nuka-Cola Quantum into this thing. But I am trying to take on Earl and all the other world bosses. So once I kind of have a, an, an understanding or determination on how well this can do, I assume it's probably going to do well. But obviously against the likes of Queen and the, the, you know, the likes of Earl and all that kind of stuff, obviously they do have quite a lot of damage resistance when it comes to explosions and all that kind of stuff. But once I kind of get that little bit, uh, 
I, you know, once I understand that a little bit better, I'll hopefully try and get a video out there showcasing that as well. But until then, folks, let's wrap this up and let's head on out of here. Let's do it, folks. Let's go. And there you have it, the bloodied thirst sapper. Hopefully today's video helps you utilize the thirst sapper a little bit better in the wasteland, and hopefully it won't take you too long to obtain one yourself. And if you found today's video enjoyable, consider clicking that subscribe button for more follow content like this, and so you never miss out on any videos that I publish. I want to say a massive thank you to all of our subscribers over here on YouTube and over on Twitch, as it means the world to me that you enjoy my content and the work that I produce. For our Bethesda fans, if you find yourself shopping on the Bethesda store and would like to support the channel, you can use my creator code BTPINEAPPLE120 to receive 20% off of your purchases at checkout. And if you'd like to support the channel in a more personal way, consider checking out my merch store, which has an array of t-shirts, mugs, and other pineapple-related merch, which I'll leave a link to in the description of this video. And lastly, to you, the viewer, the person who stumbled upon this video, thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, Vault Dwellers, stay safe out there in the wasteland. Welcome to Vault 93, and I'll catch you all in the next video.